Booking a couple's trip to Tartosa, Finley broke ain't so broke anymore. So last time we talked, Gwyneth Westwood, the founder of my Not So Berry Challenge, invited her alien baby mama, Tanisha Stallings, over to her home to spend the night. Tanisha asking her to become her girlfriend, while her daughter and our heir, Rosalie Bastianich, enjoyed her second day of her senior trip to Salvadorada by exploring the jungle with her boyfriend, Finley Broke. Finley telling Rosalie that he loves her for the first time and that he booked them a romantic getaway to Tartar for their upcoming birthdays, a trip where the two of them will be completely alone. Well, Rosalie, seems like that chance to woohoo with Finley is coming. Back at home in Windenburg, Gwyneth couldn't contain her excitement. She was in a relationship with Tanisha Stallings, and they had the most insane wicked session before Tanisha left. Bella was no longer grounded and was allowed to use electronics again. She was looking overall happier too. Things in Gwyneth's life were great, as well as Rosalie. She's dating Finley Broke. Such a sweet kid. All she wanted to do was celebrate these blessings. So, she did. She poured herself a celebratory glass of champagne as she sat in Rosalie's bedroom. She's never been apart from her precious daughter for this long. She missed her so much and hoped she was having fun. But on the bright side, she'll be back tomorrow, early in the morning in time to open her Winterfest gifts. Girl, we're wasted from just two glasses of champagne. We got things to do and you're drinking a third glass now in the old playroom acting like you don't have plans for today all right miss girl i'll leave you to that Meanwhile, erratic Bella was not in the mood to sleep. Besides, she had an early morning doctor's appointment. Have we forgotten our inhaler once again? How many times do I have to tell you? Whatever. While her mother slept, Bella decided to get started on decorating the house for Winterfest. She got the tree out from storage and decorated it all by herself. Our heir had woken up bright and early and was back in the jungle with her boyfriend, Finley Broke. They would be spending their morning morning exploring a bit more before spending the rest of their day with their classmates and chaperones at the museum and going out to eat. They found one last region of the ruins to explore, thinly cutting down the branches with ease, and they were met with yet another beautiful sight. Yes Rosalie, your body is tea. Finley had such a great time exploring with Rosalie, and she felt the same. And he was also very excited about their couple's trip to Tartosa this weekend. Rosalie was excited as well, but also extremely nervous. Her and Finley are going to be completely alone in a city she's never been to. They'd be sharing a room a bathroom, a bed. She loved the idea of this level of intimacy. Being the romantic girl she is, but actually experiencing it for the first time was something else. What if she parties too hard and pukes in front of him? What if she farts in front of him? Can she even handle him hearing her go to the bathroom? And on top of all of that, did he expect to woohoo with her on this trip? Finley was such a gentleman. He'd never pressured her to do anything. He'd never even brought woohoo up. And she did want to woohoo with him, but the thought of being so vulnerable with someone made her skin crawl. But isn't that what she wanted? To woohoo with Finley, she honestly didn't know what to do. Perhaps she needed someone's advice, like Courtney James's or even her mother Gwyneth's. She wasn't gonna keep thinking about it. She made out with Finley for a bit before they headed back to the villa to meet their classmates. While at home, Bella was enjoying one of her last free days before starting high school school in two days. She exercised, worked on her aspiration, and continued decorating the house for Winterfest so she could surprise her mother Gwyneth when she gets home from work. She immediately noticed the Winterfest spirit upon entering the house. She thought Bella did such a great job, and with a hug, she also presented a question. She was wondering if Bella would be interested in spending the night at Tonisha's place in San Michuno. She mentioned to Gwyneth yesterday how she'd love to have Bella Bella over and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with her. Oh my god, Bella would love that. She hasn't seen Tanisha in so long. She left for upstairs to pack an overnight bag and was out the door and on her way to catch the train to San Michuno in no time. And that's when Gwyneth got herself ready for the night. She was exhausted, so after putting on the new dress that she bought, she made herself some coffee.
And then, she picked up her cell phone and ordered some takeout, one plate of tofu and one of chicken. Then, while she waited for the food to arrive, she set up the kitchen table and placed down a chilled bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. And she sipped on that Sauvignon Blanc until the delivery person arrived with the food. And she made sure to tip them well. Ah, yes, perfect, a freshly made dinner for two, and she couldn't go without having a relaxing smoke, especially with the kids being gone, but wait, why was Gwyneth doing all of this when Tanisha was spending time with Bella? It was because she hadn't done all of this for Tanisha, it was because she had invited Joseph over, there were some things they needed to talk about before saying their goodbyes, regarding the house, regarding money, and regarding Rosalie. Gwyneth could automatically tell Joseph was hungover, typical, and he still has the audacity to flirt with her. I can't with him, bro really thinks he still has a chance. Whatever, the two of them sat down and got to talking. Gwyneth was going to try to be as amicable as possible while talking with Joseph. So many great things have happened in her life lately that she needed to remember but it was hard keeping high spirits when joseph was quick to show that he didn't really care why would she expect more from him to begin with so she got right to the chase straight to business first of all she hated him she was sure he already knew that but she just wanted it to be clear he shouldn't even bother trying to flirt with her they were over and for good Oh and, she's woohooing Bella's mom now, Joseph wanted to know why the hell she asked him to come all this way if it was just to insult him. This wasn't something she couldn't just text him about. If he were patient, she said, then he'd understand that she wasn't done. Second, she wanted to keep the house, she didn't want his money. She makes plenty of it herself, but this is the house their daughters were raised in, and she intended on keeping it. Joseph said she could have it, he didn't even want it. And third, Rosalie and Bella. Bella wasn't even his biological daughter, but when it came to Rosalie, she was about to age up to a young adult anyways. She would have full custody of her until then. Joseph already knew all of this. From what he remembered, Rosalie doesn't even want anything to do with him. He hoped that would change with time. And what about his will? Was she in it? He made it clear to Gwyneth that Rosalie will inherit 100% of his money and belong once he dies. Now was that all? The two of them took a break from yelling at each other to eat their food. And of course, Joseph grabbed a glass of wine for himself. As much as Gwyneth hated Joseph, she couldn't help but pity him. What a sad, pathetic, drunk of a man he'd become. What a shameful father. And how she was capable of loving a man like that for so long was beyond her. So, Rosalie really hates him, huh? Joseph mentioned how she stopped by for a visit a couple of days ago and made him feel awful, but he was way too drunk to fully conceptualize what she had said. Sounds like something he'd do, Gwyneth said. She was sorry that Rosalie had to witness Joseph in that state. Gwyneth knew it all too well, and she felt sorry for Joseph. Sorry that the last conversation the two of them will ever have would be such a terrible fight. Joseph rolled his eyes. Just because Rosalie was mad at him now, that didn't mean that she'd never speak to him ever again. She loves him. Oh, no, that wasn't what Gwyneth meant. Joseph wouldn't be seeing Rosalie ever again because tonight, he would be dying. He told Gwyneth to knock it off. That really wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. But it was funny how Joseph thought she was joking. After all these years, does he still not know what she's capable of? But things are different with him, aren't they? They loved each other. He's the father of her child. This is definitely true. And originally, Gwyneth was going to let Joseph live. But that was until her conversation that she had with Rosalie the other day before she left for her senior trip. Rosalie had let it slip that Joseph had called her a harlot on spooky day. A harlot. A fucking harlot. How dare he call her teenage daughter such a degrading name for doing what teens do. He was sorry and he didn't mean it. It was the wrong choice of words. But Gwyneth didn't care. That was the last straw. And besides, it was already too late. He had already consumed the poison.
Yeah, she poisoned the fuck out of that chicken and that wine. Joseph got up, looking for a way to run out of the house, only to discover that all the exits were locked. He started to feel really ill. He felt a violent pain in his stomach. He began to panic, pleading for his life. But Gwyneth was enjoying this. It was nice to see him suffer after everything he'd ever done to their family. He began to call her all sorts of names and insults, telling her she was never going to get away with this. Oh, Joseph, she already has. She was going to tell Rosalie that he abandoned her, that he ran off without saying goodbye because he loved the alcohol way more than he ever loved her. Rosalie would never hurt at the hands of her father ever again. And Gwyneth felt a peace knowing that as she watched him take his last breaths. He struggled to speak as he kept throwing up, managing to call her a bitch just one last time before getting called home. Joseph Bastianuch is officially over. He can no longer hurt Gwyneth or Rosalie. And our founder was happier than ever. The sight of her ex's lifeless body on the floor filled her with joy. Poor Speckles looked so concerned though LMAO. Gwyneth quite literally could not contain her excitement as Grimm was getting ready to reap his soul. It was like the biggest weight ever had been lifted off her shoulders. She said what she needed to say to him. She has the house and now Rosalie will be getting a fact check the second Joseph is presented zoomed dead and she becomes a young adult. She'll never see his punchable face again. She'll never hear his annoying voice again. She has the house. And now, she can finally move on with her life with Tanisha, with her two beautiful daughters. They can all heal from the trauma Joseph caused them and finally be a healthy, happy family. But as Gwyneth talked with Grimm, she realized that there was one more thing she had to do to completely let Joseph go. She made her way down to her basement. The only reason why she kept Sonia Roca, or Basement Bitch the second, down here was because she aided Joseph's kidnapping. But with Joseph gone, she didn't see the point of keeping her around. And we got a 10,000 simoleon heart in the process. Now, that was better. Now she felt like she could truly start over. Joseph was gone. Sonia was gone. Rosalie was in love. Bella was growing up. And Tanisha was her girlfriend. And Speckles is there. This is how it's supposed to be. Gwyneth was convinced. She knew that their future would be bright. She knew her family would heal. And she knew that one day in the future, everyone in her family would forget entirely about Joseph Bastianich and the stain he left upon his household. She looked at the time, realizing that Rosalie would be back in just a couple of hours. And Tanisha and Bella would be here to open Winterfest gifts as well. So she got to cleaning up the basement and then the kitchen, and then hopped into the shower. It was time to celebrate the holiday with her family. 